Hello, welcome to A Great Alternative. Today I'm gonna to go through my top 10 sales on Pond5. Let's get on with it. Quick side note, new viewers to this channel might not know that it's all about myself and my wife Alicia moving to an off-grid homestead. Part of that journey is living in a caravan. So what you can see right here is my studio setup. Um, one corner of the caravan that has to get put away as soon as I've stopped recording and editing for the day. If you're interested in anything to do with homesteading, natural crafts, stuff like that, have a look at some of the other videos that we've done. But most importantly, I'm sure you're interested in how much you can make on POM5. So first of all, number 10, zoom through rustic vintage film cameras on probe lens with smoke. So this particular clip was filmed during lockdown. So it was like, what can I do by myself and with the kit that I have already? I happen to have a whole bunch of vintage cameras. We also happen to have a shed that I could change and move around. And I had just been lucky enough to purchase a probe lens. I did a bit of research beforehand. I went on POM5 and I searched for vintage camera clips. At the time, there were barely any. Therefore, I thought if I could A, do something a bit different, probe lens, but also at the same time showing kind of a vintage camera display. Not only would it be kind of fun, it would also be something that potentially would be of use to people. Out of this top 10, it's probably one of the main ones that I was really hoping would sell because I'd spent so long planning and preparing and getting things ready. Granted, it's had two sales. <laughs> it's had two sales and it has made me $50. It's not that many, but hopefully, because it's something that's a bit more unique, it might have a bit more longevity. Okay, crack on. Number nine. 15 futuristic dramatic abstract orb light leaks and transitions pack. This one, filmed in the same space as the vintage camera. I put futuristic abstract because to me, it kind of has a cyberpunky kind of feel. So therefore it is quite specific. Whereas a lot of overlays you can use for various genres and they kind of work. The reason that there is 15 and not just the one, is partly because it's an overlay. So you could argue that is one downside of doing overlays is generally they are available in packs. So if you're about to create something like this, then maybe you need to have a bunch of them together. This one has had two sales again and made $50. So that's two sales in HD. Quite a few of these sales that I've made are in HD still. So my aim is that hopefully in years to come, people will still be interested in 4K clips. But we'll see. <laughs> okay, number eight. Sunlight flare reveal from beautiful green, lush, rich English woodland. How many descriptive terms can I get in there? <laughs> this one is an example of a clip that I shot while shooting a documentary for the channel. Again, only two sales, $50. Okay, cracking on. Number seven. Horror macro shot of scared, frantic blue eye with moving veins. This eye, this was also filmed during lockdown on the probe lens, right close up. I just thought it's one that I have seen plenty of times. Didn't think could get many sales. It's again, two sales, $50. Don't worry, they're all gonna be two sales with $50. <laughs> and it's quite a generic one, really. But the difference is I'm white, I have got blue eyes and depending on what you're doing with your eye opening shot, there's so many variations even within this specific thing. Frantic horror eye with red veins is totally different to beautiful eye opening and just looking straight down at the camera, which again, I've also done and they're sometimes they're used as like transitions and I've cut out the eye, things like that. This is used as a, someone's scared, you know, quick, shot that was my idea anyway again film this in like 10 seconds I had a quick idea it was just like oh i know come right up close to the camera <whistles> done sorted sometimes quick ideas compare this to the vintage camera this took pff, 10 seconds to do the vintage camera one if i'd just done that one shot which it was the first one it took almost two days to do they've both so far made the same amount of money it's difficult Difficult to choose where to spend your time. Okay, next one. Oh, this is one of my favorites. Okay, 
So this is a friend of mine. We went out just as lockdown was easing. So you could go out if you were far apart. So I was thinking, okay, what's shut? Lots of churches and older buildings and I'm quite personally interested in it. I have got a video, link up there, if you wanna make money out of historical sites. This is a prime example of why I made that video because it was me making money out of historical sites. This was the local church to where we were living at the time. Neil came up, with, is it, because he's a mate of mine, we wanted to see each other, we wanted to do some practicing with some kit for another project. While I was there, I was like, right, well, we've got to test these cameras anyway, what can we film? So, because I was re-watching Buffy with Alicia at the time. I'm Mr. Giles, the librarian. We decided that the setup would be Watcher in Graveyard. I have loads of different clips from this one day. The idea being that, no, I didn't believe this would necessarily make sales because it was Watcher and it was, you know, Buffy related. It might make horror related sales. And that's why I thought that could work. But also this generic stereotype of what we thought from this shoot would be, he looks like a professor or um, someone doing research, a historian doing research. So therefore having the aesthetic and suit and a vintage camera and stuff like that kind of potentially matches that professor doing research scenario. Personally, meh, it's not the greatest shot. I definitely did ones that, that day that I myself am much more proud of. This is as standard as standard can be. It's just a one of the middle shots of B-roll, just him walking through the graveyard. <laughs> no idea why this is picked and why others haven't. This one has had one sale and it has made $51. I think the 4K clips are $48. So this may have made a little bit more either because of the license or sometimes, which is why personally I let POM5 set my price, is for this example, is that sometimes they do something, it's either bought in bulk or it's bought with other clips or it's part of a package that they've done with a company or something. And as a contributor, you make an extra couple of dollars out of it because of the arrangement they have. So there we are, $51, but only one sale. Next one. Oh, top five, number five. This is an example, one of my favorite examples, partly because I did it at home. It was an idea that I had that so far has somewhat paid off in that it's made us some money because it took me a while. It was fun to create and most importantly, it was a challenge. You know, you as a creator, I'm sure you, you know that you want to challenge yourself. The best advice I ever got was every single project you do, you should try something brand new that challenges you. Whether that's a new lens, whether that's a new filming style for filmmakers, uh, whether that's a piece of animation or something, just do something that challenges you. This one was an example of that. So I created this animation. This was my take on a cyberpunk hacker coding digital display computer screen overlay background. I made this for a few reasons. Firstly, for, was for it to be used as a background which I have also used in my, my work, my corporate job, but also it was used as a background for a much more time consuming clip that I had designed, which was myself using the computer as a time lapse. I then rotoscoped out every single frame of a time lapse. Quick word of warning, if you're thinking of rotoscoping a body or just time lapse in general, depending on what it is that you're rotoscoping, for me, it was a body, time-lapse moves like this all over the place. <laughs> Two weeks worth of work, but the final shot I'm pretty pleased with. Hasn't made any king money on POM5, <sighs> but one of the backgrounds I made to fit on the wall behind me has made a bit of money. It's only had two sales. However, this one's made $75. Okay, next. Sunset time-lapse of downtown Fort Worth, Texas, USA. This was recorded on a corporate project pff, nearly 10 years ago. It's an example of sometimes with corporate projects, if the budgets aren't massive, this is maybe a way that you can earn a bit of extra money as long as they agree to it out of that project. Maybe it's been used because it's Fort Worth, but it might have been used just because it says business. I have used this clip on many different projects when I just need a clip that says business area. This one has had three sales. 
and has made $75. Okay, now on to top three. In at number three. I'm pretty happy with this one because this is actually one of the newest clips that I've put on to POM5. This was one of the first shots that I did when we arrived here in Wales. I think the reason this is sold is because it's generic, it's rolling hills, it kind of says the UK, um, but I'm sure it says a lot of countries look similar to like this. And this one is a time lapse that is quite has done quite quick. So therefore the end result is that the clouds don't cane it through the uh, sky, which is also good and is also a very specific aesthetic, but this could get, be used as just a nice, slightly abstract, regular shot of the countryside. So if you're using something and you want just like a smooth, nice shot of the countryside, this is kind of like an abstract version because you know that this isn't real time, but it's not so fast that it has to be, it's building up pace, you know? Only two sales again. But this has made $96.99. So to again say an example of why you should try and get shots as well as doing something else, this was done because I had a meeting with another freelancer. So we just decided, can we meet at this tourist spot? I can get a few shots off said tourist spot, put them on Pond 5, maybe make my money back. $96.99, that's paid for my petrol and lunch and a tiny bit and probably, uh, you know, another meal out of that day. Okay, top two. We have another 15 futuristic dark abstract orb light leaks and transitions pack. This one has sold three times, but has made $103. So quick side note, that means out of the getting a glass orb, sticking the light behind it, on the probe lens and basically just doing this thing, you know, as it as it as it zooms past, I've made just over $150. Quick side note: if you are interested and you want this pack, first of all, you can go down below and click on my um, link onto Palm 5. If you do buy anything from Palm 5 after going through that clip, then I make a tiny, very tiny referral commission. Or if you want it for then the other video that I made about how much I made off of POM5 in the first year that I was on POM5, click on that link. There might be a giveaway for some clips, these ones included. So go check that out after you've watched this video. But first, number one. Any guesses? What do you think it's gonna be? A location, time-lapse, an overlay, or funny man eats cheese and jam and peanut butter sandwich in church. Pick now. Praise your bits now! Come on, come on, quick, quick! Bit, bit, bit! Bidding ends! Time lapse of sunset, Fort Worth, Stockyards, Texas, USA. This has had four sales. I know what you're saying. Four sales is nothing, really. I would agree. <laughs> I need to add something additional. I was incorrect about the clips. I thought it was this one that was licensed. It's not. It's actually the Cyberpunk one, but it must be that POM5 isn't putting it as part of their earnings for that clip, which makes no sense, but there we go. I have made, as I will show on screen now, first of all, $71.76, then an additional $179.40 off of one clip and basically that's two license upgrades. This clip actually is number one <laughs> and it's not what I said. So I apologize everyone and I've just realized that. So forgive me, please, cheers. And this has only been on here for a year and a half. I'm pretty pleased with that. Okay, so what has this taught me? What do I think this can teach you if you are also on POM5 or on any stock media site trying to sell your stuff? Sometimes obvious things still do sell. Time lapses of specific locations, but also it's a nice shot. Time lapse, sunset, low shutter, well color corrected, well graded, you know, it doesn't seem jittery. It's just a nice, good quality. If it can be used as something else, so it says business, it says tourism, it says travel, it says city, it says town, it says countryside, it says something that is generic but and doesn't have to be too specific 
as well if it can do that. Secondly, overlays. Things that people can use more than once that isn't just a standard shot, it's something that might be easy to make, but sometimes you don't want to go and make it yourself. Thirdly, trying to be unique, but specifically being unique within a genre that's still popular. So it's searchable, but at the same time stands out within the rest of that field. Also, what have you learned from this video? What have you learned from those top 10 clips? What does it say to you? Please comment down below. This, this channel is, for me, just as much about learning from yourselves as it is about potentially being able to pass something on. As you'll see in a lot of the other videos that we make, especially to do with various crafts and things like that, I am a complete novice. So a majority of it is about myself learning and Alicia learning as well along the way. This is just one example, one of the areas that I know a bit more about, filmmaking and photography, which is why I'm making these videos. Put down below, what have you learned from this video? Maybe what things have you found out? You know, what's been your top selling clips and, and why do you think that they are your top selling clips? Please comment down below. I cannot wait to see the weird and wonderful things that people have sold on stock media sites. Okay, that's it for today, everyone. Thank you again for watching. If you have watched this all the way to the end, as always, we're still a tiny channel, so please like, share, subscribe, all of that kind of stuff, because it really does help. At the minute, I am doing this totally for fun, for passion. I love making films. I love hopefully being able to share and help other people. And I'm not going to lie with some of the, you know, the other craft related projects. I want to learn and get to try cool, fun things. <laughs> so if my aim is that this channel can hopefully grow to a level that basically it pays for itself and we can just I can continue making videos like this. So, uh, yeah, please like, share, subscribe, all of that kind of gubbins. Go on Instagram, Facebook and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.